Wow, you know, you mentioned minimalism. And funny thing about that, Elisa, is that this past summer, I began to adopt a minimalist lifestyle. I picked up books on it, started watching videos on minimalist lifestyle. Wow. I purged my wardrobe. I started with the wardrobe, did a complete purge. I, I probably I had several trash bags full of clothes. Mm-hmm. Off of the Salvation Army. And one of my so we all have our guilty pleasures, right? Yeah. And my guilty pleasure is gadgets. I like tech stuff and webcams and you know lights and airpods and just just electronic stuff software so that, that's my my guilty pleasure uh, pleasure so i had all types of just stacks of hdmi cords and <laughs> pipe cords and mouse pads and stuff that's just been sitting there collecting dust and i just did a complete purge and starting to uh, really minimalize my lifestyle so I can focus more so on things that matter. I think that's really, and like you said, there's when it comes to minimalist, there's so many variant, variant degrees of minimalism. And there's really no blueprint or right or wrong answer when it comes to the, the whole idea of minimalism. But I think from my experience and what I've learned from it so far, is there's more, it's more so predicated on minimizing the fluff in your life so you can increase the focus on the things that really matter. Yes. And that's what it is for me. (laughs) That's what it is for me. Awesome. I love that. That's amazing. I'd like to talk with you some more about your experience with it. Um, I did the same. And coming from a four-bedroom, two-bath uh, car, two baths, two-car garage home twice, you know, that we lived in, you can imagine. I mean, it, we had no kids, so I had all the closets. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I'm a pretty like I'm a very organized. If it doesn't have a place, I don't want it in my home type of person. But still, moving from that, now I had to take when I got my apartment four bedrooms where I had all the closets, just two closets. I I was getting rid of stuff when I moved and transitioned to to from Florida to Arizona. Again, I stored stuff and had paid for storage in the midst of my financial crisis for a year, almost two years, a hundred plus dollars. And that stuff I was never going back to, but I was, it's my stuff. And that's where I was like, you know, this is ridiculous. First of all, I have a global mindset. I want to travel and help people transform their lives, transform families and communities. I, I cannot have stuff. Like I need to be ready to live someplace else in a month. (laughs) And so it needs to be down to my life should probably be be well lived from two suitcases, if you ask me. Um, Everything else is just extra. And why do I need all of it? So I kind of think that was kind of my gauge to align my lifestyle with the purpose I'm called to in all areas of my life. So it included (laughs) that. You know, one thing I picked up in a a minimalist book that I was reading, Elisa, is uh, the author said that when it comes to their wardrobe, they'll go through their wardrobe and anything that they haven't worn or used within the previous 12 months, it's got to go. Every December for me. (laughs) When when is it? Every December. Do it every December? Yes. I power through. I'm taking it out constantly. Um, I just look at it and I'm like, I know I'm not going to wear that again. And, you know, women, we like, we're always <laughs> in a process of ensuring our, we're losing weight and stuff like that. And I have no intention to go back up. So I get rid of the big stuff. I don't keep it just in case I tell people that's the number one thing. So I'm always looking for people to give stuff to. I also give to, um, Goodwill and Salvation Army, but I always try to find people that I can give it to, directly to because, you know, I wear good stuff. I, I like the little tag you have, logo you have on. That's kind of stuff I wear. Bargain shop it though. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. 